Hello, this is Diane McNaughton. Welcome to my watercolour painting channel. In previous videos, we've looked at edges, soft, hard and broken edges. We've looked at washes and mixing on the paper. Now in this video, I'm going to incorporate all those skills while I show you how I paint in layers. Now, an important thing to think about when painting over a dry layer of paint is not to reactivate the paint underneath and create a muddy and flat appearance. When you paint a second and subsequent layer, you need to really just glide over the paper very gently, not lifting the paint at all. Now, having the right brush does help. If you have a brush um, such as this, which is a synthetic brush, it's got quite sturdy hairs. As you can see, it actually springs back quite quickly and it's very easy to make a scrubbing motion, which lifts the paint. And if you use a natural hairbrush, you can see this is a squirrel one. When you bend it, it just kind of stays <laughs> as it is. It's really soft to paint with. And so it really helps when you're painting with layers. You actually can't scrub with this brush. Now I'm just going to paint with three layers. You can paint with as many layers as you like, whichever works for you. I've set up a small still life using objects from my kitchen, a mug and an egg and I've put a light on them from the side to emphasize the light and dark areas. Let's get going with the first layer. I'm going to cover most of the paper with paint except for the highlight areas which I'm going to leave as white paper. I have my palette ready, I have Oriolan, I have permanent carmine, uh, cobalt blue and uh, yellow ochre. And my lovely brush I'm going to use, my Da Vinci Squirrel Mop. Right, let's get going. So in this first layer, I'm going to cover up almost all of the paper except for some of the highlights, which I'm going to leave as unpainted white paper. You can do this layer using just your lightest color if you like, but I quite like using the colors I've got on my palette ready for the painting. Now, there are only going to be a few hard lines in this, this first layer. I'm just coming around the rim of the mug and there's a lovely layer of white glinting light coming from there. So I want to keep those. So those will be hard lines, but the rest I'm going to try and keep as soft lines. In order to do this, you actually need quite a nice brush that holds lots of liquid. That's why I love the squirrel brush. So the paint doesn't dry too quickly. I need the paint to stay wet for as long as possible while I'm doing this layer. It takes a certain amount of bravery. We are so brainwashed into coloring inside the lines. Here, there are very few hard lines in this layer. In this layer, due to having such large amount of water slopping around, it will dry very light and you'll have established all your light areas, hopefully, and probably won't have to paint over them again. So I'm actually establishing my light and dark areas even in this layer and my shapes, but they're all just soft or mostly soft. In my egg. A bit of the shadow from the egg. I want the colors to mix together. And then I just need to come on this table, get a bit of color onto it, and so just run. Oh, that's a bit dangerous because I'm touching the layer up the top there and it could have started drying. This is why you have to work quite quickly, which I'm not really good at doing. And let's get the colour. So the whole page has actually got paint in it except for the highlights. I think that'll do. Our first layer is dry. As you can see, we now have a nice underpainting. From here, I'm going to paint the mid values. So I'm going to leave these light areas that I've got and not paint over them again and paint on the, in the other areas. So this is my second layer of painting. So I'm establishing the midtones, which are the areas between the light and the dark areas. I'm adding stronger color to this layer. It's much less water and more paint. 
And where the shape of an object stands out, for example, the light side of the mug against the, the background, I'm creating hard edges. But where the shape is next to another shape of a different color, but is still mid-tone, I'm gonna keep a soft transition one from one to the next. I'm painting that lovely shadow in the mug there. And I'm trying to keep a soft edge between the, the light of that inner mug and the dark. Just erase a little bit so that that drip can sort of hang about there at the bottom of the mug and it looks right. It's almost creating a three-dimensional appearance to the mug by using the light and the dark. Now I'm coming around with a bit stronger colour for the background there and I want to keep this soft edge going into the shadow area of the mug. I'm not trying to uh, create an illustration. I want to paint, do a painting where there's a bit of atmosphere and mystery. So it doesn't, the picture doesn't tell the whole story. I want to have some sort of thing left to the imagination of the viewer. Just paint a bit of the um, pattern there. And then there's that crack of light um, just at the edge of the table. And then I'm going to leave a little hard edge where the edge of the cup touches that crack of light so that your eye reads that that's the edge of the cup. And come under the cup as well. I'm just, there's a shadow around the handle and there's a nice cast shadow on the actual mug from that handle, which I'm going to paint in. Creates a lovely pattern. I'm always looking for patterns in my paintings. I'm just trying to soften that little bit there, but I need to keep the hard edge against the cup. Added a bit of yellow to it, so it's not too stark, that little patch of light, because it's sort of further away from the eye. And I'm coming now to create my egg shape again, adding more red to it, mixing the paint on the paper. So my yellows and reds mixed together. A tiny bit of blue from the background area, the shadow area of the cup creates a sort of brown look, eggy brown look. And then I'm doing the shadow of the egg, which I want it to be a soft transition from the egg into the shadow at that top area of the shadow. Now I'm going to paint some of the egg colour into the actual mug because there's a bit of a reflection of the colour of the egg into the porcelain. There's a tiny bit in my actual still life, but I like to actually exaggerate that a bit. It really creates a lovely connection. The second layer has now dried and I want to work on my third layer which will involve darker accents and any sort of details, for example the pattern on the mug. I've got to get that ellipse right, that curvature there to show the form of the mug. I'm going to put in the little motives. So I have some paints on my palette. I have a yellow and a blue, the same yellow and blue, and I'm going to make a little bit of green, just a tiny bit on the palette. Paint the stalks there. And soften it a little bit so it doesn't look like a cutout. This great little brush, a pro art acrylic brush with nylon hairs, and it's great for lifting out dry paint off the paper. You dampen the brush, 
rub it on the paper and then gently lift it with the tissue. There's a lovely reflection there, subtle reflection, that I want in the shadow side. If you have a look at this egg, it has a lightened area underneath where the light of the table surface reflects some light onto the surface of the egg. It's called reflected light. So I'm just going to lift out the reflected light with my nylon brush. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color to my egg, drop in some red and allow it to mix on the paper. Need a bit more red there because it's going to fade when it dries. Let me lift it, mix it on the paper. There we go. Let it run a bit. Now I need to add a bit more colour to the egg reflection in the mug. I need to paint the dark shadow area under the egg and soften the shadow as it stretches away from the egg. and then add a few more accents to the bottom of the mug. I see there's a reflection in the shadow area inside the mug and I can lift that out with my nylon brush as well. And then there's a shadow of the mug handle that needs to continue down onto the table. Here is the finished demonstration. I hope you managed to pick up some painting tips. My next video will deal a bit more with the light and dark in your paintings.